Hi, in this lecture we will discuss the most important concept of uh, number theory which is the prime numbers. So everybody knows what is a prime number. So what is a prime number? A prime number is a natural number which is greater than 1 and which has no other factors except 1 and itself. Okay, so it's a prime number is a natural number greater than 1 and the only factors of this prime number is actually 1 and the number p itself. Okay, for example 2, the only factors of 2 are 1 comma 2. Only factors of 3 are 1 comma 3. So if you consider 4, what are the factors of 4? They are 1, 2 and 4. So 4 is not a prime number, we will call it as a composite number. Okay, so prime number has the property that the only factors of a prime number are actually 1 and p. Okay, so let me ask you one question. So what would be phi of p, the original torsion function, what would be phi of p? So phi of p is actually the number of positive integers which is less than p and relatively prime to p. So you know that the only factors of p would be 1 comma p and every other number which is less than p would be relatively prime to p. So what would be the number? So it will be actually there are p minus 1 numbers less than p including 1. So all of them will have GCD of 1 with p. So phi of p will always be p minus 1. Okay. So that is a concept of a prime number. Okay. So you also know that device set of prime numbers also as you have discussed the only factors are 1 comma p. Okay. So there are many important concepts and many famous long standing problems in number theory is related to prime numbers. Okay. One important result is that prime numbers are infinite. So it leads back to Euclid's very old proof. We will come to that also. Number of prime numbers are infinite. Okay. There are many other primes like number of twin primes are infinite, number of twin prime pairs. What do you mean by twin primes? That means there are some primes like this. You can see like 3, 5 then 5 7 so you can see that there is only a uh, they are like p comma p plus 2 so these pairs are like this okay similarly 11 13 17 19 so there is an important conjecture that the number of twin pair primes twin prime pairs are actually infinite it's not yet been proved you can try that okay and other important pre, uh, primes are perseen primes from the point of view of cryptography it's very much interesting nowadays because of the encryption uh, standards prescribed nowadays. So the search for Mersin primes is a very important thing now. Mersin primes are primes of the form 2 raised to n minus 1. For example, if you take 2 square minus 1, 3, that's a prime number. If you take 2 cube minus 1, 7 is a prime number. 2 raised to 4 minus 1, that is 15, it's not a prime number. So you see that every 2 raised to n minus 1 is not a prime, but those numbers which are prime like 3, 7 are very much interesting and such primes are called Mersin primes. So the question is, are Mersin primes infinite? Okay, there is a big search in the internet going on, like called the Great Internet Mersin Prime Search, and this has so far yielded about 15 Mersin primes now. Okay, so about 100 million digits has been there for the 51th number. So it's a very big uh, computing task, distributed computing task. You can search for details here, and it also carries large amount of money to that. So Mersin primes are important from the point of view of cryptography. Okay, so we'll come to that later. Now, before that, we will now discuss an important result. Every non-zero natural number greater than 1 can be expressed as a product of primes. So, every non-zero natural number greater than 1 can be expressed as a uh, product of primes. So, for 1, it is there is no point in talking of 1 because my smallest num uh, prime number starts from 2. So, maybe I can consider 1 as an empty product of primes. So, we are not considering 1. So, from 2 onwards, every natural number can be expressed as a product of primes. So, we will prove this by induction. Okay, so 2 as you see 2 is basically 2 itself single product 3 is actually 3 itself if you take 4 it is actually 2 into 2 so the inductive step so the initial steps are true so I'll assume that every natural number less than n can be written as a product of primes so let us assume that every inductive step is uh, I'm taking the strong induction approach here I'm assuming that every natural number less than n can be written as a product of primes so now if you take n so either n can be a prime, so if n is a prime, it is it can be written as simply n itself, so that's the result is true there. Or n may, may need not be a prime, that means n need, may be composite. Numbers which are not primes are called composite numbers. So n can be can be composite. So that means n has some factors, so n can be written as some n1, n2, n2. So that is why it be, became prime, not it didn't become prime. Okay. So uh, suppose n can be written as n1, n2, n2 if it is not prime. Now this n1 and n2 are strictly less than n. So they can be written as product of primes. So n1 can be written as a product of primes. n2 can be written as product of primes. So taking them together, we can say that n can also be written as a product of primes. So this is called factorization of a number. So you can see that every natural number has a, every natural number greater than 1 has a prime factorization. Very important result. Every natural number greater than 1 has a prime factorization. Okay, for example, if you take a number, for example, 36, 
can you find out the prime factorization so 36 you will know that it's actually 4 into 9 so it can be written as 2 square into 3 square take it if you take 100 how will you write 100 100 is actually 10 square so 10 is actually 2 into 5 so it is actually 2 square into 5 square so every whichever natural number you take you can always find a prime factorization okay even if you take negative integers you can all put the you can take negative sign also and the rest of the numbers you can express as a prime factorization itself okay and also is this factorization unique is this factorization unique so it guarantees that this factorization is unique except for the ordering of the factors okay so that means 2 square into 3 square is also can be written as 3 square into 2 square actually it is same thing only only the ordering is different okay so how will you prove it is unique so suppose there are two factorizations suppose you have a number n and test two factorizations p1 p2 etc pr as well as q1 q2 etc qs maybe the number of factors are different here okay and i am suppose the factorization unique and now what i am doing going to do is that i am going to cancel out the common factors suppose there is two here there is a two here i'll cancel them out suppose there are three twos here and two twos there i'll cancel two twos and one two will be remaining okay so we cancel out all the common factors and make it in the elementary form so this is obtained from so this product is not actually equal to n because we are cancelling out the factors so what you do is that first you write down the different suppose there are two different prime factorizations of n from that prime factorization you cancel out the common factors and you obtain this result okay so from this it is obvious that q1 q2 etc qs is a actually is a multiple of p1 so p1 divides q1 q2 etc qs okay but you know that p1 is a prime number so that means what can you say so either so there is another result so before that suppose p divides uh, suppose <coughs> p divides uh, some q into r okay so either where p comma q comma r are primes we will use this result here so suppose p q r are primes okay so actually there is no need for primes itself suppose p is a prime suppose p is dividing uh, suppose p is divide suppose uh, one second yeah okay suppose p is a prime and suppose p divides a product p divides a b okay so there are so for example suppose i am taking 4 4 divides 12 okay so 4 is not a prime this i am just taking to show you the contradiction here that's it okay so if p divides uh, a b the only possibilities are either p divides a or p divides p okay this will not be the case when it is not a prime for example 4 is not a prime here so if 4 divides 6 into 2 you cannot say that 4 divides 6 or 4 divides 2 that's simply not true okay but for a prime number whenever p divides a product p should always divide a or p should always divide b why is it because if p does not divide a that means that p and a has no common factors so the only factor if p and a p does not divide a the only factors of p are 1 comma p so if p does not divide a that means a and p has no common factors except one so gcd of p and a would be simply p1 so that means what can you say therefore p will divide b how is this you know that from an earlier result if a divides b c and if a this gcd of a and p are equal to 1 then a will divide c from that result you can say that p should definitely divide p okay so this is also if prime if prime number divides a product it should either divide one of them fully divide one of them that's the idea so using that idea here so you know that from the unique facts from the two factorizations i have got that p1 should divide q1 q2 etc qs okay you have got it from this representation so that means either p1 should divide q1 or p1 should divide q2 or p1 should divide so p1 should divide some q1 q2 qs from this okay that means p1 should divide some qi in the setting but is this possible this is not possible because p1 as well as qis are primes so the only factors of p1 are 1 comma p1 so since p1 is a prime p1 will not be equal to 1 and the only factors of q1 are 1 comma qi so since qi is a prime this will be actually only qi so that if p1 divides qi it actually means this p1 should be equal to qi or p1 is equal to qi but this is not possible here because we have taken this representation in such a manner that the, all the common factors have been cancelled out so if p1 is equal to qi p1 should not be here in the first place 
okay so this representation is not possible and hence the factorization is always unique the contradiction was there because we assumed that there were two representation but such a representation is not possible and hence the representation as a factorization will always be unique except for the ordering of the factors okay so for example how will you we have also represented how to represent how will you represent 90 90 can be written as 9 into 10 so it is actually 2 into 3 square into 5 okay so this representation would, would, would be unique except for the ordering of the factors means 3 square into 2 into 5 this is the idea okay so i hope this is clear so every natural number greater than 1 can be represented as a unique factorization of primes okay and before that before proceeding with further results based on this unique factorization let me uh, bring this important result that the number of prime numbers is infinite okay number of prime numbers is infinite how will you prove it? it's a very old proof by euclid you assume that suppose the number of prime numbers is finite there are only finite number of prime numbers and maybe let it be one uh, one is not there so two three five seven etc up to p i have list, suppose i have listed all the prime numbers out there okay that means it is a finite set okay so now i am going to construct a new number here okay so let n be is equal to 2 into 3 into i am going to multiply all these prime numbers together and i am going to add by 1 now tell me what will happen if i divide n by 2 what will happen so this is a factor of 2 so the remainder will always be 1 what will happen if i divide n by 3 remainder will be 1 right so similarly so if you divide n by any prime number in this list always the remainder would be 1 so what can be n n can either be a prime number okay if n is a prime number it is not in this list so this list is incomplete so our assumption that we can list out all the prime numbers is is wrong okay or n can be composite if n is composite it means that n has prime factors like the prime factorization but none of the primes which i have listed out here is dividing this p so none of them can be a prime factor of n okay so that means there are other primes out there which we are, we are not able to list out okay so the assumption that we can list out all the prime numbers as a finite set is um, wrong that means the number of primes is actually infinite so it's an elegant proof very simple proof but it's a very elegant proof is about 2000 to 3000 years old so you can just check it out okay now we'll come on to the unique factorization so there are many consequences of this unique factorization okay so since if you know for example um, suppose you need to find a gcd of 24 and 36 one way is you can use the Euclidean algorithm or other way is you can use the prime factorization you just prime factorize is 12 24 it will be 2 into 12 so that is actually 2 cube into 3 what's the prime factorization of 36 it is actually 9 into 4 so it is actually 2 square into 3 square so to find the GCD what you have to take is that you take each of the prime factors and you write down the minimum power here so there are the 2 is there the minimum power from 2, two from both sides is actually just 2 the minimum power of 3 from both sides is just 3 so this is the GCD so this is actually equal to 12 okay what happens if there was some 5 also here what will you do in that case also in that case also the GCD will be 2 square into 3 into the minimum power of 5 is 0 so in that case also you will only get 12 so this is how you find GCD if you know the prime factorization okay similarly you can also find the lcm least common multiple also in that case you will be taking the maximum power okay for example if you need to find out the gcd of 24 and 36 first i will prime factorize it out and square 2 cube into 3 then 2 square into 3 square so you write down each of the prime factors and you write down the maximum powers here 2 cube and 3 square okay so this would be the lcm in this case and similarly if there is a factor of 5 here also you will have to bring that also into the picture so every prime factor you have to take it out and you have to write the maximum power from each of the term and you will be getting the lcm okay so this is another significance of prime factorization but this will only work if you know the prime factorization the prime factorization may seem to be easy but when your number of um, the number of digits is large it is a very tough task to find the find all the prime factors so in those cases maybe you'll have to go to euclidean algorithm or there are other ways of the modifications of euclidean algorithm where you can find it out easily okay now okay now we'll do one more thing we'll also come to one another important so this is another significance of this prime factorization 
okay and one more significance is we will use prime factorization to calculate the euler torsion function you look, use prime factorization to calculate the euler torsion function okay so how to find the value of phi of n by prime factorization that's an also an important result here okay so suppose you have number n and first to do is what you do is that you will factorize this n so i can write this as some p1 raised to some r1 into p2 raised to r2 etc some pi raised to ri so i am writing n as a product of prime numbers where you have r1 r2 are the powers there and this all this pi's are distinct okay like it will be like 2 square into 3 raised to 4 into 5 so these things are distinct here okay now we know that since you know, oil torsion function already have learned that phi of mn is equal to phi of m into phi of n if m and n are relatively prime so since p1 p2 etc are distinct they are powers will be relatively prime so phi of n will essentially be equal to phi of p1 raised to r1 into phi of p2 raised to r2 into etc phi of pi raised to ri is that clear now i will find out what is phi of p raised to. so let us try to find out what is phi of pi raised to ri or for simplicity what is phi of p raised to r okay so i'm going to, what is so what do you mean by phi of p raised to r it is actually the number of integers which are less than p raised to r and relatively prime to p raised to r okay so number of integers which are less than p raised to r and relatively prime, prime to p raised to r so how many integers positive integers are there which is less than p raised to r there are actually p raised to r minus 1 integers which is less than p raised to r from from this we have to choose the number of integers which are relatively prime that is there are no common factors with p raised to r okay before that i'll discuss you will i'll choose the integers which has common factors with p raised to r so which type of numbers would have common factors with p raised to r so basically they will be since p raised to r have only multiples of p it will all the number uh, the integers which have which will have common factors with p raised to r are so essentially multiples of p only because p raised to r is p into p into p into r uh, we are writing it r times okay so p raised to r contains only factors of p so the number of integers or the integers which have common factors with p raised to r are simply multiples of p okay so how many multiples of p are there till p raised to r can you guess that there will be 1 into p will be there 2 into p will be there p into p is there p that is called p square similarly p raised to r is again a multiple of p how, how many multiples is it it is basically p raised to r minus 1 into p right p raised to r minus 1 into p is nothing but p raised to r so till p raised to r there are p raised to r minus 1 multiples so when you are going for oil function you are going only for the till less than p raised to r so before p raised to r there are except the p raised to r the factor there are p raised to r minus 1 minus 1 multiples of p so these many multiples or these many integers have common factors with p raised to r okay so totally there were p raised to minus r minus 1 integers which were less than this p positive integers and out of them i am subtracting though number of integers which have common factors with p which is nothing but p raised to r minus 1 minus 1 so it is actually p raised to r minus p raised to r minus 1 so this is the value of phi of p raised to r okay if you understood very simple thing if you understood the result i'll apply it here so phi of n will be simply so phi of n it, i can write as pi raised to ri right so because p raised to r minus p raised to r minus so it is pi raised to ri minus pi or p1 raised to r1 minus p1 raised to r1 minus 1 into uh, okay into similar next one would be p2 raised to r2 minus p2 raised to r2 minus 1 etc up to pi raised to ri minus pi raised to ri minus 1 okay now i will take the p, uh, p1 raised pi raised to ri outside so it will be p1 raised to r1 i will take it outside p2 raised to r2 i will take it outside pi raised to ri i will take it so make it more compact so this will become 1 minus 1 by p1 because I have taken P1 raised to R outside, there is only R1 minus 1 here. So, one, there is a factor of 1 by P1 here. 1 minus 1 by P2. Similarly, you will have 1 minus 1 by Pi. Okay. And this is this factor is nothing but the prime factorization of N. So, it will actually be N into 1 minus 1 by P1 into 1 minus 1 by P2, etc. Up to 1 minus 1 by Pi. 
So this is the formula for Euler torsion function by unique factorization theorem. Okay, and you can try it. Suppose I need to find phi of 360. The first step is I factorize this 360. 360 I can write as uh, 36 into 10. That is nothing but 9 into 4 into 2 into 5. So it will be actually be 2, 3 times will be there. 3, 2 times will be there into 5, right? So it is 2 cube is 8, 8 into 9, 72, 72 into 5. So this is the factorization. Now what is phi of n? It is nothing but n into n is actually 360 into 1 minus 1 by 2, right? Again, 1 minus 1 by 3, right? Again, 1 minus 1 by 4. This is the value of phi of 360. Let us uh, check it out. 360 is equal to 360 into 1 by 2 uh, into 2 by 3 into 4 by 5, right? So simplify it out. So 3 into 5, so basically 3, 120. 24, 24 into 4, I am getting it as 9. So, this is the uh, Euler torsion function of 360. So, this is how you use that. So, these were some significance of primes. So, we have discussed till this much. We will discuss more on primes in the later classes. Okay, thank you.